What's up, Foot Clan? Before we start today's show, I want to remind you, you can head over to ultimatedraftkit.com and find out about the brand new UDK Plus. Oh, UDK Plus! The UDK Plus is our award-winning Ultimate Draft Kit, plus our brand new Dynasty Pass, the Draft Analyzer, and season-long access to the DFS Pass. Plus, plus, plus! It's for those of you who want just a little bit more. And the thing is, is used to pre-order... And you get all the bonuses, and those are all there. You get discounts, and then you get a chance to be in the listener league as long as you pre-order before March 1st. But now you get instant access to the Dynasty Pass, which means there is content there for you right now. It's just waiting. It is tantalizing. It is sitting there at ultimatedraftkit.com, and I want to invite you to head over there right now and check out the UDK+. Plus. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Another spectacular day. I hope Brooks got the date right, though. Tuesday, February 16th. Is that right, Brooks? Okay. (laughs) Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright is here. Hello, everybody. And look, man, if you are uh, in this this ice storm, I hope people are staying safe because there are places all over the country right now where things are a little cray-cray. Yes, Jason Moore is here. Uh, not frozen. Not frozen in the tundra of Arizona. No, I've seen videos, and um, it doesn't look like a place I want to be. Um, it's freeways don't look like freeways. No. Cars are sliding around. Um, they, they I don't know how north, to live that life. They went north of the wall. Oh, is that what happened? Mm-hmm. There, I think so. Very, very large creatures out there. <laughs> Uh, no, stay safe. That's it's been crazy. So, uh, we have a really, really fun show today. We're doing the rookie review. We're going to be walking through uh, all of the. You know, we're we're getting right around to that time of year right now where we are looking forward. The dynasty pass, the the rookie prospects. You've got the workouts and pro days coming. You have the draft right on the horizon, and um, right now, every single one of those prospects is uh, performing as <laughs> expected. Uh, no disappointments for your fantasy roster, just potential. Off the charts. Off the charts, yeah. Uh, jumping really high, doing a lots of push-ups. Uh, everything looks good. But this show's about reflecting on all the rookies from last year, which ones uh, kind of, you know, did what we expected and which ones disappointed and which ones we think have hope for the future Mm-hmm. Uh, even if they did disappoint. So we're going to get into that on today's show. I want to invite you to check us out. If you want to watch the video product, uh, we are remote today. You can do that. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. You can subscribe, click the bell over there. Mike's uh, video background is a little bit more uh, luminous, I guess. A little, uh, uh, little Eiffel 65 action going on in here. Uh, it, it's, you know, it, it, Mike hasn't upgraded his at home set. Uh, until he started playing Dungeons and Dragons or something like <laughs> that, that. and is now is correct. Now it's it's <laughs> now it's right? worth it. <laughs> How did, did you start doing that? Did you start playing your Dungeons and Dragons? I Mike? did. We kicked off our campaign last week. It and, was uh, how, awesome. how did that go? It was awesome. I killed a goblin with my loot. Uh, our okay. friend, good friend of the show, Brian Ketrin. Uh, thought he was killing a goblin with his sword, but he forgot he didn't have a sword. Oh, what and a then, loser. And he ended up just uh, uh, punching a dude right in the grundle up through the head. Remind me <laughs> not to ask how it's going with the Dungeons hey, & Dragons anymore. You asked, bro. You asked. <laughs> uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers and the community of thousands of of Foot Clan supporters over at jointhefoot.com getting the bonus weekly episode uh, all off season, some premium perks, a discount on the UDK. And uh, best of all, you're, you're with uh, your kind. I mean, you're with so many great people 
at jointhefoot.com. All right, quick question. News uh, broke recently that Eagles tight end Zach Ertz is bracing for a change of scenery. I think the Eagles may be as well. Uh, expecting a release, a trade could be included with a Carson Wentz trade. Those two um, kind of connected at the hip. So what would be the best landing spot for a Zach Ertz fantasy comeback? Mike, you have been mm -hmm. right at the forefront of the Zach Ertz despair club. Yes. Yeah, I, I jumped off of that wagon. <laughs> at the first sign of trouble. Uh, Jason has a great answer. I'll let him go first. Yeah, I just assume, you know, Mike's going to go with like the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders <laughs> or something if you want to get value out of Zach Ertz. But I think the best landing spot for him uh, would be the Colts. I don't expect it to happen, but if he were to wind up there, he'd be reunited with Frank Reich, who loves to utilize tight ends in the system. We've seen, you know, Jack Doyle, Mo Ali Cox, Trey Burton have certain spurts of value in that system. But the good news is, well, Trey Burton is an unrestricted free agent. Mo Ali Cox is an unrestricted free agent. And Jack Doyle can basically be cut for only one and a half million dead cap. They could save a lot of money. Mo uh, Ali's restricted. Just He is just, restricted? Yes. Hmm. Um, the point is the opportunity is there. I would expect that if that were to happen, it would come with Carson Wentz. And so then you'd, you'd have both uh, familiarity with the passer and the system. So that, I mean, if he's got something left, I think that he would need something like that to, to, you know, to get fantasy value back again. I, I question whether he has it left or not though. Well, the thing about tight ends is that someone generally believes somebody still has something left. I mean, you need him to go somewhere that, uh, similar to Jimmy Graham and them pursuing him in Chicago and him having fantasy value from time to time there. I mean, Chicago is a destination that makes sense to me as well. Uh, there's the potential that he could go in there and have PPR value. Uh, but you need to find that coach or system that believes in him, and it's very easy to connect the dots between Frank Reich and and going with Carson Wentz. Do you have a place that you uh, you think he belongs, Mike? Yes, he belongs. Oh no, in, in the coaching room. I think he has a lot to offer young players who are still have it. Players that are not washed yet. Players that are Ooh. not a casualty when they're out there on the field, just soaking up targets that are bringing absolutely no value to your team. But I think he's still sharp upstairs. So. While his body has betrayed him, I believe that Trey, uh, I believe that that Ertz could coach up one of these younger players. I mean, oh. like you you mentioned Chicago. If he goes to Chicago, Chicago and helps Cole Komet come along there, that'd be great for everybody. <laughs> one win year, win. One year removed from eighty eight receptions, he's just thirty years old. It happens Which, fast. Yeah, but I will say this: thirty years old for a tight end is is not that bad. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of tight ends that play well into their 30s. Obviously, Travis Kelsey's currently older, Greg Olson, Delaney Walker. You, you just, I mean, the list is not short, uh, unlike if you're talking running backs or other positions. So I, I do wonder if it was just, was he was he injured and, and really struggling this year? And if he comes back healthy at 30, he, he still has a few years of a decent career left or not. Do you believe that Zach Ertz was ever elite, Mike? Oh, or or was this just a he, product of incredible volume? I'm looking at yeah. his yard, yards per reception throughout his peak. It was always around ten. Last year he, it did dip down. I would say he's like at at his peak. He was an excellent player. He was like he had he had good hands. He had a, a knack for getting open. And but I don't. I wouldn't say that when you watched her. When you watched Ertz, you weren't like that's. That's a Travis Kelsey difference maker. That's George Kittle. Look out, because if as long as he he breaks one tackle, he's going to go to the house. That just was never what we had from no, Ertz. Was he was he was always a volume guy. It was Austin Hooper from a couple years ago, right. where you know he knows how to read a zone, he knows how to get open, and good he'll catch player. the ball if, if you if you throw it to him. Absolutely good player, but he doesn't have the specific traits that say I beat these defenders at all times because they can't handle my physicality. If you're right, if the end has come and everything you spoke about, Zach Ertz, poor Zach Ertz, was in incredible past tense there, Mike. Um, five seasons of over 75 receptions, 
from his year 25 season to year 29. Uh, you know, I, I looked at him almost the way, not late, late career, but later career Jason Witten, you know, where it was just tried and true, always available, best first read, second read for Carson Wentz. That's where he really made his hay. So, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what happens uh, over the course of the offseason with both of those players because they're not long for Philadelphia. No. All right, let's get into the review. Rookie Review. All right. Brand new for this year's Rookie Review show, uh, brought to you by the illustrious Judge Giamatti, uh, who has put together this show, Doc. Uh, we're going to break down the rookies into three categories. Impressive. Uh, these are rookies that helped fantasy managers withstand some victories. Mm -hmm. Oh, the studio loves them. And then we have decent. I mean, they're not great, but they're not disappointing. They did their job. And, uh, of course, there's disappointing. Minimal fantasy impact. And all you can really say well, is... Better luck next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, better, not, better luck next year. So let's start at the quarterback position. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one is rather easy to classify. There are a pair of uh, rookie quarterbacks that fit that impressive category that we'll all agree with. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, over the past six seasons, only four rookie quarterbacks have finished as a top 15 fantasy quarterback or better. Uh, Jameis did it in 2015. He was the quarterback 13. Dak did it as the quarterback six. Kyler as the quarterback eight in 2019. And this past year, Justin Herbert as the quarterback nine. And so the two impressive rookies are indeed Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow. You'd agree with both of those classifications, I assume. I, I would. I was thrilled with what I saw from Joe Burrow before he got injured for a rookie. Um, you know, it wasn't always beautiful fantasy success, but you saw the traits that translate. I was very excited for the future. Uh, I still am. I think that he's going to, uh, you know, overcome the injury, have a, a a great career, and then of course, I mean, Justin Herbert had. Oh man, it was just flat out the best rookies quarterback season of all time. Like, can we can we say that officially? Is that up for debate? I, I can, genuinely don't. At know. least statistically, you can. I do want to. Cause, just because other of, people would factor in, like, how many games did you like Ben Roethlisberger's rookie year? Uh, I mean, I can't even remember how many games he won. Well, it, this is going to keep happening. I mean, I, I feel like I've been saying it every year where it's not hard to get the rookie quarterback coming out that you know are going to have an opportunity and then project them to break records anymore. I mean, Baker Mayfield in limited games broke records. Justin Herbert did it in his first year. Joe Burrow was well on his way. They both could have been at that uh, could have yeah at that touchdown total it's going to happen more and more because teams are giving these guys an opportunity from day one and the league is just more conducive to the passing game and to having success on that side of the football now, that doesn't take anything away from herbert or burrow they still had to do it um but i do think that you know we're we're no longer sitting here saying all fantasy rookie you know quarterback options are not viable for fantasy unless they run the football. I think you can have passers come in and succeed now. I uh, yeah, uh, uh, you can, but the the rushing definitely makes it an easier investment when it comes to the draft season. Uh, I agree with you that it, yes, it's definitely easier to break the records, but you have to have a lot of things click where it, like Joe Burrow is the first overall pick, so he they're on a bad team, you know. Herbert, just a, a couple picks later, I think it's going to be really interesting because you have Trevor Lawrence, who by many is declared already, you know, the next big prospect, and he's going to have to go to Jacksonville, presumably. Will he be able to come in and put up anything close to 4,331? I would put the I would put the bet against that uh, with heavy odds at this point. One of the interesting things with Burrow. 40.4 pass attempts per game. That's the most ever by a rookie quarterback. So Yeah, because they, they weren't good. They, they, they had to throw the ball a lot. 
Well, and that, you know, that could be true of a, a one in 15 Jacksonville team. And depending on the weapons they have, I just think it's more, it's more possible now than it ever has been before. Okay, now, yeah, I'll agree with that. Talking about, this is where I think some debate's going to break out. Um, we need to decide here how to classify this next guy. Yeah. Was it an impressive or a decent rookie season for Jalen Hurts, quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles? This is difficult because you got four games. Four games of Jalen Hurts. Would you classify it as impressive or decent according uh, to our scale? So, I, I, you know, we're the fantasy footballers. I'm going to take this from a fantasy uh, standpoint, not just an NFL. Was he impressive as a rookie? From a fantasy standpoint, I think you have to say impressive. Uh, you know, in, in 10 games, Joe Burrow was on pace for over 4,400 passing yards. He was only a quarterback one three times. Uh, you know, Jalen Hurts played four games. He was a quarterback one twice uh and he was Including the quarterback the one number one yeah it, exactly so uh, you know it, it, it still stands to reason uh, i know that you're saying uh not only the mobile rushing quarterbacks will be good for fantasy but it is the mobile rushing quarterbacks that are great for fantasy and so i was impressed um by the utilization and the legs and i i think he has plenty of room and opportunity to get better so i i would I would put Hurts in the impressive. Do you disagree, Andy? I You make a compelling argument. I mean, I should be filtering it through the lens of fantasy. And if you filter it through that lens, impressive is the answer. I've been, I was, the, I've been told on this show we don't talk about real football. We only talk <laughs> about fantasy. When it's comedic enough for us to make that accusation, yes. Uh, look, I, I think it would be hypocritical of me to not agree with you. I, I was going to say decent. I think he's been – I think he's a decent, real NFL quarterback. You know, 52% passer did not impress me with his arm very often, but you're 100% right. I defended Josh Allen and his running prowess with low completion percentage numbers as a rookie. I think Hertz has a long way to go. I'm putting him in the nebulous, like Marcus Mariota early career category of like, let's see what you've got. I don't think you can make a declaration on four games as to what you're going to have the rest of the way, but. I think you convinced me to classify him as impressive. Mike, are you on board with that? Yeah, especially speaking fantasy-wise. And look back, you know, Lamar Jackson's rookie year. I mean, he won all his games and everything, but that that season where he started about half of them, 58% completion, just over 1,200 passing yards and seven starts. Like, And then the, the next year, things were a lot better for Lamar Jackson. And that's a pretty similar situation where – a player is coming in, you know, partly through the season. He didn't get to training. He didn't. He wasn't the starter at training camp, and the team wasn't built around him being the guy yet. So I, I think that the the fantasy future for uh, what, what we're going to see in Philadelphia with Jalen Hurts is is very bright. Yeah, it's it really stinks because of what Lamar Jackson did a couple of years ago. I think people are going to accurately. Uh, put Jalen Hurts very high in their rankings. Uh, I, I was hoping he could be that next late round breakout, but uh, you know, cat's out of the bag. He's going to be great next year for fantasy. Where do you think he'll go? Like what quarterback? What? I think he'll probably go quarterback five or six. Wow, um, okay. And and I think he'll. Pro I, I personally think he'll beat that. I believe that oh. when when you have yeah. a right. mobile I can already quarterback, see our whole off season <laughs> right before my eyes. When you have um not a mobile quarterback, but a quarterback whose primary weapon is electric running, um, that is a a true game changer, and you can build a system around that, which obviously they didn't do. They couldn't. You know they 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 were built for Carson Wentz, uh, and then they had to make the change halfway through. This offseason, they're building for a mobile quarterback, and I think it will fit what he needs to do. And for fantasy, it's just it's stupid, but it's cheat code. Uh, quarterbacks get so many more points for running the ball, and Jalen Hurts will be a top-five quarterback. Yeah, we'll, we'll have some offseason discussions, debates. New head coach, new system, new situation, and then it comes down to making a bet on Jalen Hurts based on what you believe about him and his future. I mean – he ended the season with his, what, 35% passing disaster against Washington when they had the chance to get in the playoffs and, um, or at least disrupt the playoffs, I guess. Right. But, but he, uh, was, but he, he averages, was on pace. He was on pace for over 1,000 rushing yards in those yeah. four starts. 
I just, yeah. You, again, like I said, you're going to have to draw a line in the sand and say what you believe this team's going to do. And none of us know because we've seen four games of Jalen Hurts. And, you know, you, you talk about the system being built for him. Well, the defenses were not built to play him. And you see players succeed, especially in their first few starts when teams have not had film on a player and been able to disrupt what they do. So it's going to be very interesting. I know you're a big Jalen Hurts fan coming into the NFL, Jason, and believe in him. So uh, it will be very, very fun to watch. I'm so is that an official my... impressive? It's an I official so. impressive for so. me. Yeah, I think I'm – it... Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you see <laughs> – Double drop from uh, now. Al I mean, to be fair to Carson Wentz, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jalen Hurts. Carson Wentz this year only completed 57 percent of his <laughs> passes. Like, so I mean, you're you're able to compare another quarterback who was considered to be good entering the year. Like, perhaps that situation was just untenable for anybody. Yeah, and the weapons aren't aren't that great. Um, all right, before we get to Tua, I want to thank today's sponsor, IP Vanish. They are a virtual private network, a VPN for short, which is a tool that, look, if it, it, are you on the internet? B uh, yeah, so protect yourself. Protect your it's privacy. It's like a ninja smoke bomb for, you, for browsing the internet. You can use it on computers, tablets, phones, even things like your Fire Stick. When you're streaming media to where your data is encrypted, what you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching, it, it's your business. Is not everybody else. IP Vanish is just three forty nine a month. That's twenty eight bucks a year to protect your online privacy and security. You get a personal IP address, can't be tracked by anybody. Uh, you could circumvent the stupid online censorship. Or yeah, uh, the the one that I care about actually is getting protection when using public Wi Fi. Like you're on public Wi Fi all the time. You go to a restaurant, there's no signal. You hop on the. I'm always like, do I want to connect to this Wi Fi? Well, if you got IP Vanish, your data is encrypted, so no one can see what you're doing. Like, holy so, crap, this guy likes cats. <laughs> yeah, so go to IPVanish.com slash footballers. You can get 65% savings. They have plans starting at $3.49 a month. That's $27.99 a year. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offerings. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. They are the best of the best. They have 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot with more than 6,000 reviews. So check them out. Go to ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. That's Cats the Musical, right, Mike? That's the... Oh, how oh, dare you? How rum, dare you? Chugger? That's Cats the Musical. He's just... Oh, you don't need anybody knowing you're just... Bow, 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 Man, what's on a replay? serious cat? I, that, I, what is worse, to be a cat person or to be a cat's person? Or a person? cat's person? I think Whoa. it's worse to be a cat's person. <laughs> And I'm a theater. I was a theater major, but like it was made. No. Where, have, have you ever seen Cats? Not not the movie, but have you have you attended a performance of Cats? No, of a course professional? not. Of course not. Oh, I've seen it. I I saw it as a kid up there in New York City. I think it was Winter Garden or something like that. Yeah, uh, but what's your what's your official review, Mike? Oh, two. two I wish I had more thumbs down. <laughs> I wish I had more than two. Uh, oh man, it was not a good time for young Mike. Better watching Cats or this next candidate here. Uh, was it a decent or oh. disappointing season <laughs> I for don't know, Tua Tungavailoa? Uh, I might take Cats. Tua, I, I'm going to put it in the disappointing category. If we have you to filter have it, to, yes. if we have to filter it through the uh, lens of fantasy. I don't. I'm not one of those people that says, "Okay, we've seen enough of Tua to to say he can't be a foundational quarterback ever." Or you know, I feel like they limited what he was able to do in this offense. But for fantasy purposes, he was not worth anything for your team. No. No, but uh, he did hurt all your fantasy options um, that you <laughs> could have had on the Miami Dolphins, which was really delightful when you've got Devontae Parker and Mike Kosicki and uh, good options that you can no longer use because Tua is the quarterback. I am further along my path of saying he won't be a great quarterback ever than, you know, Andy is holding out uh, judgment. Obviously, this is a guy who was, you know, a year and a hip injury away from being the next great quarterback. When I scouted him, I wasn't in love. I didn't, I didn't think he was great in general. I didn't understand the hype. I felt like it, he, he got overhyped from when he came in and won the, the championship game. Uh, back in the day, 
Well, because Jalen Hurts Jalen Hurts couldn't do it in that game, so they had to put Tua in. Right, but <laughs> when we're talking fantasy, like you know, <laughs> I don't care because Tua, while he seems like he should be a mobile quarterback, you know, he was on. A uh, 16 game pace of just over 200 rushing yards. He's not really a a guy that's going to get a lot of fantasy points on the ground. Although he was also on pace for six rushing touchdowns. So when he, they were around the goal line, he was well, uh, utilized there. Let Let me ask you this because, like I said, they did not. Tua was not stretched as a rookie, and uh, since 2000, his 9.75 yards per completion were 49th out of 50. One rookie quarterbacks with Ooh. eight starts. Now that's really bad. Is that's that proof? Bad. But is that proof that that he can't do it, or they didn't let him do it? You know, when you're a rookie and you have, it seemed like we were making the joke on every play. It was like four yard out route. You know, tight end in the corner, tight end in the flats. Like I, I guess you know they the Dolphins won ball games with him. Players do you know, have a better opportunity as time goes on. They're going to have a lot of draft capital to get him weapons. I guess I'm just asking, is that proof that he can't do it? It's not proof that he can't do it. Um, cer it's certainly not, you know, ironclad in, in that situation. But I do believe that if a quarterback is good enough to, you know – the 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 coaching staff can say we want to protect him we want to have him manage the game or win with defense but at the same time he should be pushing the boundaries of the of the coaching staff and saying okay we're going to open things up because he's he's able to do more and i don't feel like he showed anything that said man this guy is going to be something special when you had the comparison on that team too you have Ryan Fat uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> ends the year <laughs> is that Ryan, Ryan Fats Fats Patrick Fats. <laughs> oh man! Come on, man! He hasn't retired yet, but oh man, retirement Fitzpatrick that'll oh. be a that'll be a magical photograph. Uh, <laughs> it will. Uh, did you guys see him talking to our good friend of the show, Matt Harmon, about how many buttons? What the etiquette of of how many buttons you can have open? I did not no? see it. Oh, it's it was a fabulous video. Uh, but oh, but buttons Fitz, on the shirt. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, Fitzpatrick was was seven point eight yards per attempt. Meanwhile, uh, Atua was down at 6.3. So maybe the coaching staff put the training wheels on him, or maybe he just – maybe he was playing that way. Maybe he was there's a, playing scared. There's a lot of emotion that went with Tua's opportunities yes. this year because they came at the expense of all your fantasy players, and they came at the expense of a player just universally beloved, beloved. yeah, <laughs> in Ryan Fitzpatrick. So those were really the the quarterbacks worth discussing. Nobody else really. I mean, you can mention Jordan Love. Um, I don't <laughs> even think. Oh. I don't even think better luck next year applies there. Professional uh, clipboarding by that one. Oh my gosh! Yes. Uh, let's talk about the 2020 rookie running backs. All right. Since 2012, there have been at least two rookie running backs in the top 24 every year. There were six this cool. past year. Six of them. They were hot. Jonathan they were hot. Taylor, James Robinson, Antonio Gibson, DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins, and he Clyde. Clyde, because we made this top 24, not top 20. Well, Clyde, Clyde got was, in there. Clyde was an injury away from being a top 20 running back. Uh, universally impressive. Um, the All those names I just said are in the impressive category. So Even they deserve Clyde? a round of applause. But... <laughs> yes. It's too late, Jason. We've already applauded him. But... The one that I – five of the six. And then Clyde is the one where I want to debate, was it an impressive rookie season or a decent rookie season for Clyde? I don't think it's fair to throw him into the disappointing when you finish at RB21, the totality of the work he did. Uh, but – Well, here's, here's a stat. Consistency of 23, 800 yeah, yards. In his favor since 1990, here's the rookie running backs with 1,100 total yards and fewer than 14 games played. Marshawn Lynch, Lev Bell, Todd Gurley, Leonard Fournette, Josh Jacobs, and now Clyde Edwards-Alaire. So obviously he was good, but for fantasy, I mean, it was certainly a disappointment for fantasy because of the capital of which yes. you 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 paid to acquire him. Uh, you wanted the opportunity to be there more, but he wasn't he wasn't bad. He was not a bad running back. I would put him in decent. I'd put him right in the middle. I'd put him in the decent rookie season where he did flash at times. He also I feel like, you know, he didn't really ever take over the way that we thought he might in, right. in Kansas City either. Are you in the decent category, Mike? Yeah, 
it, decently impressive is what I will say about mm. Clyde Edwards <laughs> Alaire, who before this is counting the the week fifteen injury game. He he was the running back sixteen through that point. So I mean he was he was on the fringe of being in the top twelve. He had the the real problem, I mean, aside from everything we've laid out, to me, with the, where I took Clyde Edwards number one in our rookie draft, even though I liked Jonathan Taylor, the running back, more. I just liked the the landing spot of Kansas City, plus still liking the talent of Clyde that, that made the decision for me. I took him 101. He, like you said, Andy, where he didn't take over. He didn't win me a week. There wasn't that. Dalvin Cook week where it was four touchdowns. There wasn't the Christmas Day game with Alvin Kamara. And I think that had Clyde given you at least just just one of those, you would be feeling a lot different about him moving forward. Do you think that it was fair to automatically put DeAndre Swift and J.K. Dobbins into that category the way that Judge Giamatti chose to do? Uh... I because think I mean, so. DeAndre Swift, RB9 from week six on, finished at RB18. Yeah. Okay, I think Swift's locked in. But Dobbins finished, uh, what, RB? D yeah, D Dobbins yeah. was yeah. so great. Okay. Once he got the job. And yeah, that's the thing is you have to, you you got away once they finally stopped giving the ball to Mark Ingram and just gave it to Dobbins and, and the Gus Buzz. Things were pretty great. All right, then what? how do you classify Cam Akers? Oh, man. That's because it was one. very limited amount of work. Uh, really four weeks of relevance in the regular season. We all like the future, but he feels like he fits into the decent rookie season category. Yeah. If it, you want to try and drive his ADP down and call him just decent, I would appreciate that. No, you know what? I will I will actually drive it down further. He had a disappointing rookie season. He did. Oof. I love – listen. I what loved, about that talk of waiting until they got the job thing? Uh, well, it's different because – with you know in in this situation you thought there was a chance where he could inherit the job week one he was coming in with a guy in uh, darnell anderson who was barely used <laughs> yeah. um and you you know mm -hmm. he had the opportunity to just win the job he didn't win it up front then he had injuries so it, it's kind of like with jk dobbins you knew he was coming into a heavy committee where he was behind mark ingram that mark ingram was the star he just flat out won the job because he was better cam Akers had a disappointing rookie season but cam Akers is unbelievable once he finally got it which was way too late in the season to really matter for fantasy um you know you're you're talking about um i think a superstar next year i i always loved the talent um and but for fantasy this year i i feel like if you drafted him and held on to him you were very very disappointed what do you have like two weeks that you could actually play him and got three. value well, probably it, two three. by the time you believed exactly okay that that's fair as it yes it, he had three great games and then he got injured against the jets and then i would put uh you know Keyshawn vaughn although off season hype oh, obviously man. Invisible rookie season. Thank you, Bruce Woof. Arians. Uh, thank you, Leonard Fournette. Thank you, Woof. Uh, bench warming, Shady McCoy, AJ Dillon. Uh, you know, it's a hard to call it disappointing when you probably weren't drafted. Uh, Zach Moss. I would put him as disappointing. He never really did anything to <laughs> Jason Jason's Sour making a, face. a really Jason bitter Zach beer Moss face. So much. That, are you kidding me? Zach Moss had the most impressive season that he could have. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I I can't believe that he got on the field and good, you know, good for him. Is he getting um, great? He's getting graded on the Moss scale. Oh. He's get, yeah, if he's he got an A plus on the on the curved Moss scale. Um, no, Zach Moss can't. He can't disappoint me. You know, he he would disappoint me if he did well. That would disappoint me. I would be <laughs> oh sad my at God, my scouting. Man. Zach Moss is getting eaten alive. Yeah, oh. so um, he'll be replaced this year. 480 yeah i mean he's he's a you, depth you think he's he a will? depth player yeah he's a depth player yeah i do i think he should whether well, they will could, or not we'll see could it yeah. should do very I know, different things I, know. I, I don't know did we have that discussion on this show we talk football so much but uh, i i i think we were did we, we have discussed it him air? recently well i could we because i brought up that Najee harris was being mock drafted to the buffalo yeah we, Bills. we talked about it on was that on the show I couldn't it remember. was on the show and i was All saying right. i think that it's more realistic than we think because Zach Moss and Devin Singletary are taking up the depth chart 
for somebody else right now. Um, but we'll see. Uh, all right, let's talk about Wookie- Wookies. Let's talk about Wookies. Yeah, uh, rookie rookie wide receivers. <laughs> you don't want to spend any time on my on my dude, my dude Lamichael P. Ryan. Well, I mean, <laughs> Jason Jason seems not ready to indulge that one. There, I oh, mean, man. What, yeah, dis- what would you what would you say? What, what would you say, Mike? I would say the future's bright. The future, <laughs> the future is bright for the Michael. Come on, <laughs> okay. come on, Buck, do something. Okay. No, I I don't actually really love the Michael Pena. He's a fourth round guy in the Jets, but he's on my dynasty team, so I'm just cr- fingers sure. crossed. <laughs> That was a pure. That was a pure. <laughs> we need to just say Speaking the name so that, my, so that my oh, dynasty look, team has a shot with I, I was going. I'll be honest. I was going for a pump and dump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to be oh great. The value is going to be great next year. You, I would go trade Here. for him in uh, your dynasty leagues. Here comes the Michael Dogecoin. <laughs> All right. Um, let's talk. Rookie wide receivers. Not the first time I've called them Wookies before. Uh, that goes back not the year, last. years. Yeah. Not the last. Um, number of rookie wide receivers who have finished in the top 36 of the past seven years. Uh, last year in 2019, we had five. And then it was a dry spell for a while. 2018, we only had one. 2017, had two. 2016, had three. 2015, had one. But last year in 2020, we had five again. Justin Jefferson. Up at wide receiver six, Chase Claypool at 19, CeeDee Lamb at 24, T. Higgins at 30, wide receiver 33 was Brandon Ayuk. This was, um, like, I don't even love that stat, if I'm honest. Uh, This was a year of, well, because I don't think, I think Justin Jefferson, end of sentence, really helped you of the rookie class. So even though it's impressive, Mm -hmm. the other four were tantalizing you with, the future potential. Mm -hmm. And so you saw the flashes you wanted to see to know that you drafted the right player in your rookie draft. But Claypool, Lamb, Higgins, and Ayuk, they kind of said, they poked their head out and they scored some points and then they'd they'd hide and then they said, wait till next year. That's the way that I kind of see those five players. Mm. Um, We talked about Jefferson and Claypool. I know, you know, Claypool had some big games. He was impressive. Jefferson, right. we don't need to discuss very much. I mean, 1,400 yards as a rookie, not many guys can do that. None. Not only Jefferson. Yeah, and, then you know, Claypool, like I said, some big games, some down games, consistency was outside that top 36, so I think that that fits with what I'm saying where these players were not every week starts unless your name was Justin Jefferson. No, I, I agree. Claypool actually did, I, I think, a little bit of harm because he had he had some back-to-back good weeks early where you didn't play him, but because they were back-to-back, you started to play him. And you wanted to get that home run, and then you put him in your lineup, and then he disappointed and disappointed and disappointed. Um, I, I would agree with you, but the, the tantalizing future is legit. I mean, we saw enough out of C.D. Lamb, who finished as the wide receiver 20, uh, with Andy Dalton in a rookie year in a three-headed – wide receiver core to believe in CD lamb. Um, I think we saw enough from T Higgins again with backup quarterbacks after Joe Burrow went down to say he looks like he could play in the NFL. He's, he's a legit player. So I'm excited about those two prospects. Personally, don't, Jason, like, don't forget about Garrett Gilbert and Ben DiNucci. Yeah, the ball ben DiNucci. Lamb. <laughs> that was a fun, that was a fun experiment. Um, so, so out of yeah. those four non Jefferson options, who are you most excited about? Oh, CD Lamb. CD Lamb, for both of you. Yeah. What? what who's next on the list then? Between uh, Higgins, uh, Claypool, and Ayuk. Higgins for me. Uh I think that's I, where I'm at too. It's probably Claypool for me. Uh, but both of those guys, I have no idea who the quarterback is going to be for the first month of the season. Uh, like I, I think longer term. My my excitement would be for Chase Claypool, who I, I think that Claypool can evolve into like a dominant number one in, wide receiver in the NFL, and I think that T Higgins can just be like a a good one, a good number one. He he, if they both peak at their ceiling, Claypool will be higher. That's where I'm trying. I to think get. the yeah no I get it, and I think that the separation may come with we don't know who that that next quarterback is in Pittsburgh. 
Right. But we do know Joe Burrow will be the quarterback in Cincinnati. So I think it splits the difference a little bit for me, but both players have great potential. Help me decide here. Was it a decent or disappointing rookie season for Jerry Judy? Decent oh, oh, disappointing. Or disappointing. Super disappointing. That's that's official. <laughs> disappointing for Jerry Judy. Well, yeah, I mean I, luck <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah. Get him. Seriously, I mean, look, Jerry Judy had all the opportunity that you could have dreamed for. The number one wide receiver went down. He was on the field. He was running routes. He was getting targets. And he really 113 did. targets and just 52 catches. Yeah. I mean, he did Impressive. nothing with them. <laughs> and, you know, I, I do know from, you know, a lot of uh, the film guys, they talk about, look, Judy, Judy was solid. He was open. Um, he, his routes were great. Everything you saw in college. So I don't know how much is on him and how much is on Drew Locke. Um, but he, but you can't say anything other than Jerry Judy was a massive disappointment this year. I would say both in fantasy and in, you know, the the real game of football. Like if I'm a Denver Broncos fan, I would hope that he comes out and dominates. You you drafted him to be a dominator, and he he failed. I don't know if that was buckling under the pressure. You know, he dealt with drops. Well, it's, I, it's tough to paint any picture where you're super excited for Judy because uh, Cortland Sutton's going to come back. I mean, who's and a, Drew Lock might come back. <laughs> that's, that's true, uh, and that that makes it hard to be like, okay, well, here we go. He he was getting his feet under him, and next year is going to be, uh, you know, sky high. Well, no, Cortland Sutton's coming back, and yeah, I think Hamler showed some things this year. Flashed and and Noah Fant flashed, and it's like, okay, is is there a, a chance that Judy's like the third target for Drew mm -hmm. Lock? That I mean, doesn't Tim sound good. Tim Patrick had Drew Locke, and he was pretty good was <laughs> this okay, year. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you can't get too down on him as far as his outlook, right? He's a rookie. So, so, sometimes it takes time to make that NFL transition, and he didn't do it in his rookie year. A lot of great wide receivers don't do it in their rookie year. So I'm not, like, out on Judy's future prospect, but gross gross rookie season. All right. Would you have, would you have classified LaVisca Chenault as a disappointing rookie season or a decent rookie season? Because I tend to lean actually towards the decent side. I Played give him 14, a decent. 14 games, 58 for 605, you know, round robin of quarterback play there. Yeah, I, I see him as decent. He, I mean, he's disappointing in if you were drafting a second-round uh, second pick rookie in your redraft leagues, but I think everyone had a better perspective on what LaVisca Chenault sh could and should be for – for this rookie season, and, and you watching him play, he he also has a very uh, bright future ahead. I think Lil Visca is going to be very very good. I like him a lot. Uh, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Rager, and Michael Pittman, all three of those guys can fit into that disappointing fantasy Man. category. What do you do with Rager? I think Rager you can is, still believe in Rager. Yeah, Rager's the most interesting one here, and I, I would say my personal biggest disappointment of the entire rookie class because I think you know coming in I had Rager as a as a as a baller I I really liked what I saw on film his speed um basically I just thought he was a very good player and he, the Eagles needed him they needed him bad and yep. he showed nothing you know I feel like and Jerry his, Judy I mean, his Jason his first reception of his career 55 yards oh well, I mean that man. is important <laughs> Thank you. Not that important, apparently. <laughs> so everything I just said about Jerry Judy, where you can't, you know, say, well, he had a bad rookie year, so he's not going to have a good career. Plenty of great wide receivers did not show up their rookie season. Um, but I saw more from Jerry Judy that I liked than from Jalen Rager. Well, and, and you can, you know, if you guys are on board with Jalen Hurts being the quarterback there, and his secret sauce is being able to run the ball, you know, you're, you're – you just can't help but walk into the Baltimore smaller mm -hmm. passing yard pie situation, which means Rager may flash from time to time because Judy did that too. Judy had some big plays. Yeah, he full on a moss that one guy. Yeah, but it wasn't consistent enough to where you're you were happy for fantasy purposes, or you can't quite find the uh, the path to consistency for the next season, and that's Would what's you, troubling. So okay, let's let's head to head these guys because I think when you look into the situation it is, it is very similar where uh judy rager very disappointing rookie seasons both first round picks rager 
you can blame injury a, a bit more than you can for Jerry sure. Judy. Now, would you rather have – which I'll throw it to Andy. Which guy would you rather have knowing for Judy that Cortland Sutton is coming back and Cortland Sutton is a boss on the, on the football field, but the Eagles, if you look at mock drafts that are going on right now for the NFL – they are they are trying their best to throw a wide receiver in the first or second round onto the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't know if they will take one, but who would you rather have right now? The the higher draft capital, Judy or Rager, with potentially somebody coming in. I guess I'll they lean both the, have questionable quarterbacks. Yeah, I'll lean the Judy side. Saw more right. of him this season and a little bit just more confident in the target totals, right? I mean, we saw 113 targets last year. He's a part of their future for sure. I guess I go that direction. I was going to ask, you know, out of these four players, Ruggs, who was obviously very disappointing, uh, Rager, Pittman, and Chenault. Um, I put Pittman at the top of that list uh, and Chenault right behind him. So Rager and Ruggs would be the bottom. Yeah, uh, that doesn't two. bother me. I I agree completely. Uh, you know, uh, I I don't have a rosy outlook on Rager's future. I will throw Gabriel da Davis's name out there. Oh yes, uh, because I think he fits the um, he fits the as impressive as a fourth round rookie wide sure. receiver could be category. And John Brown's not coming back to that team, so I think Gabriel Davis is going to have a significant opportunity next year to continue. You know, if they're if if Mike's right and they have Zach Moss and Devin Singletary and they don't draft somebody. They're going to be the same pass first Josh Allen team, and I think there might be some some increased targets going Davis's way. I I love Davis's future outlook connected to John Brown. I'm all Josh in on Allen? that. I, I yes, uh, Josh Allen. I and do. Just expect John Brown John is Brown. under contract this year. Just right. For clarification. It, it wouldn't. It's not much dead cap, but I they want him. They were better when John Brown was on the field um, when he wasn't dealing with the injury. So I I I think Brown will be there. But Gabriel Davis certainly showed he's a quality player. Reminds me a little bit of, you know, when we saw some flashes from Stephon Diggs, ironically, in his rookie year mm -hmm. when he wasn't this highly, you know, first round draft pick. And you're Wasn't like, Diggs every time, a fourth rounder too? Yeah. And every time you just watched him, you're like, oh, man, that dude's pretty darn good. Uh, just for why I'm speculating on Brown leaving, they're over the cap. And if they do cut him, they save 7.9 against it. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, and so it's one of those speculation type of cuts that you never gotcha. know. Dealt with if, injuries. We'll if see. If they did, if they do cut John Brown, if they need to for cap casualty, then now is a great time to to buy cheap on Gabe Davis. Yeah, and it's probably even you'll probably always buy cheap on Cole Beasley, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that would be another name to remember. Not if he too. was on my team. All right, rookie uh, tight ends. Uh, well. Well, better luck next that's, year. <laughs> that's the sound effect. <laughs> Over the past 11 seasons, only five rookie tight ends have finished in the top 15. How many did it last year, guys? I mean, it's got to be zero, right? Zero. Yeah. Zero. In fact, Herndon was the last one who just snuck in as the <laughs> tight end 15 in 2018. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Pitts coming out this year. Uh, people oh, wonder, is he is he going to be the, the next one? He could. But I think Colt Komet has a bright future in Chicago, uh, assuming they don't go out and just add another pass-catching name. He they love the, tight ends. They love tight ends so they much do, in Chicago. They do. And the older, the better. You know. Um, otherwise, you know, there, there aren't a lot of names to throw out there. Adam Troutman could, could step into a bigger role in New Orleans. Yes. With Jared Cook leaving, Colt Komet, like I said, if, with Jimmy Graham leaving, if he, if he does indeed go. And um, dot, the dot, dot. Yeah, I, the not nearly as close as those two guys because I like Cole Komet and I do, I like Adam Trapman a lot as a as a under the radar sleeper type of guy. But if you want to speculate on potential cap casualties, uh, I haven't heard a lot of buzz about it. But Austin Hooper is making a lot of money for Cleveland. I don't know if they are happy on that investment yet. And uh, Harrison Bryant was a pretty impressive rookie that they drafted last year. All right, that'll do it for our rookie review. We want to thank Pristine Auction, great friends of the show, the best, the absolute best. Full-size helmet special auction happening right now, and it ends on Thursday. Nice. So, by the way, there is genuinely 
no more like impressive piece of autographed memorabilia than a full size helmet. Like if I could pick anything to just display, like those, right. they just smash. Uh, mm. They they make an impact. Um, there is a DeAndre Swift signs uh, signed Lions alternate full speed helmet up there right now. There's a Jarvis Landry full size, Lavisca Chenault full size. These are at thirty dollars, thirty one dollars, thirty one dollars right now. Those auctions end on Thursday, and there are hundreds more that you can check out. So please head over to pristineauction.com and be sure to use our code BALLERS when you sign up. That way they'll just give $10 into your account. So when you do buy something, maybe it's not today. Maybe it's another day. But at least your account's got 10 bucks in it. Mm -hmm. That's better than nothing. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Studio audience, once again. They they love coupon codes. I mean, honestly, that's their number. Look under your chair. Yeah, that's right. It's just a cutout. And you <laughs> get $10. That says ballers. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> when in doubt, use that code. I mean, that's just kind of <laughs> the, the the hot tip. So check them out, pristineauction.com. That'll do it for today's episode. We'll be back on Thursday with another one. And uh, we appreciate you supporting the podcast. It's been a lot of fun. Looking forward to 2021. It's going to be It's going to be good. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.